Hey guys, I'm Chef Kevin Gillespie and I'm here today with my friends from Cutting Edge Firewood to show you a little bit about how you cook over live wood. So today we're gonna be doing a couple different recipes. The first is going to be some grilled baby back ribs. And as always, the first step is gonna be building our fire. So we are using pecan wood today. And in fact, these are called splits. So little smaller pieces of firewood because we're gonna be making this dish over here in our sort of ceramic kettle grill. So the first thing to do is get our fire set up. So I have some logs already stacked in here, just a really basic, I don't know, almost TP like shape. And the beautiful thing about buying firewood in these kits from Cutting Edge is that it comes with everything that you need. So we have some little starter pieces here, we have our splits, and then we even have, thankfully, a box of matches. So let's get this lit. Once the fire is up and running, we just need to let it do its work for a few minutes, and then we'll come back here in a few and we'll actually put something on the grill. All right guys, so now that we have these lit in here, just our starters, we just need to let our wood catch. So the goal here when cooking over wood in general is that we actually don't really wanna cook over the live fire, believe it or not. We want the wood to burn down to where we're cooking over the coals that are generated by it or the embers. That gives us a lot cleaner, much more effective burn. So this is gonna take a few minutes. We'll come back here and we'll take a look at it when we're ready to grill. Okay guys, we're back. So our fire is about ready now. It's been about 45 minutes. So a little bit of pre-planning. Anytime you're working with live fire, you're cooking with wood, you gotta put a little bit of extra effort in the beginning, but I promise the end result will pay off enormous dividends. So this recipe is really straightforward. Not a lot of steps to it, but you just wanna be careful to do it in the right order. So we're using baby back ribs today. So these are pork ribs cut from the back section already very tender. This isn't a spare rib, so this isn't something that takes a super long time to cook. They're already nice and tender. We just wanna keep them really, really moist and inject some additional flavor to it. Today's dish is kind of almost a Cuban-inspired preparation. So we're gonna season these up with some salt and pepper, and then what I have right here, a mix of raw coriander and raw cumin seed. And I'm specifying that it be raw in this because we're gonna be cooking this on our grill for about 45 minutes. And so the seed will naturally toast in that hot environment from the grill. So we wouldn't wanna toast it in advance. So let's go ahead and get them seasoned up. All right, now before these go on the fire, we need to do one last thing. Obviously, we built the fire in the center of our grill and we kind of stacked it tall, but before we add our ribs to it, we actually are gonna knock the fire down and move it to one side of the grill and we're gonna add a couple more pieces of wood. We're gonna specifically add pieces that have the bark still intact. And the reason for that is that we're smothering the fire a bit, lowering the temp, but also, the bark produces more smoke and we want a really heavy injection of smoke on our ribs for the first few minutes that it's cooking and this is the best way to accomplish that. Okay guys, our fire is all situated. We've pushed it all the way over here to the side. We have our new fresh wood on it. We have our grate and then obviously we have our ribs on. Now, the key here is patience. We are not going to mess with these. We're gonna leave them, they're bone side down and they're gonna cook for about 45 minutes consistently before we take them off of the grill. I wanna point out a couple other things here really quick. We want the smoke in this flavor profile to start with. And so you can see we have a nice plume of white smoke that's what you want. If it's too dark, gray, sooty, it's actually kind of really an off flavor. So you wanna see this nice clear white smoke coming out of the top. And the way we've achieved that is by closing the baffles a bit on the top and the bottom, that way we're producing that smoke. So 45 minutes later, we're gonna open this thing up and when our ribs should be perfect. Okay guys, it's been about 45 minutes now. So let's take a peek here and see how we're looking on these ribs. Wow. These look, uh, well, these look just about perfect to me. Let's look at this. Beautiful color, by the way. This is what we're looking for. This really deep kind of red-brown color that we see right here is a direct result of that smoke that we were intentionally getting here. So that's why we added those couple pieces at the very end that had that bark on the outside of them. That's what really built that beautiful, deep kind of ochre color on the outside. So as I promised, this dish is really kind of influenced by 
um, Cuban cuisine. And so we're almost taking inspiration from like a classic whole roasted pig. So our flavor is here, cumin and coriander, which we already have on our ribs, a little bit of black pepper and salt. Over here on the grill, on the hot side, so the side that actually has our wood burning on it, I've just added a pan with some diced up whole butter, a little bit of lemon, or sorry, rather lime zest in it. And then we're gonna add some more of that cumin and coriander seed that we have on our ribs right into our pan. And it'll start toasting in the bottom of this pan as it warms up over the fire. So rather than having kind of a thick barbecue sauce on this, this is all about allowing the flavor of the pork and then that natural wood smoke to shine through on this. It's not covered up with a really heavy sauce. In fact, it's got instead just a very, very light glaze of butter over the top of that. So we're gonna let this start melting down. Once it does melt down, we're gonna add a couple other ingredients to it. Some fresh lime juice to help cut through the fat um, of the meat itself and the butter. And then some coarsely chopped cilantro at the very end for garnish and to add some brightness to it. Now, while we wait on that sauce to melt, let's look at these ribs again and kind of dissect what we're looking at here. Now, when we're working with baby backs, as I pointed out, they're already very, very tender on their own. They don't need a lot of cooking. And in fact, the first mistake that people make when using them is thinking that they have to cook for several hours. These aren't spare ribs. This isn't a pork shoulder that needs time to tenderize. In fact, you're just trying to get it cooked through more like a pork chop than like a rib. And the way we can tell that we've reached that degree of doneness that we're looking for is actually how you see this moisture sort of beat up on the surface. When that liquid, those natural juices sort of rise to the top there, that's telling me that we've reached that internal temperature of about 155 to 160 degrees Fahrenheit. These are gonna be nice and tender, but still very, very juicy um, if we pull them off now. If we let them go any longer, instead of becoming more tender, they're just gonna become more dry. So let's take a look at our pot here. Our sauce is melting really nicely. So we already have the zest in here, which actually provides a lot more of the lime flavor. The zest or the outside of the citrus fruit has much, much more citrus flavor to it, but this is gonna add a really nice acidity. And we're gonna go in here with one whole lime in this because we want it to be nice and bright. Perfect. And then I am going to actually cut my ribs and add them directly to this pot to get them nice and glazed. So let's pick one of our racks here. I find that it's easiest to cut your ribs if you sort of stand them up, hold on to them rather than on top because you can see the guides. Obviously the bones themselves are the guides for this. So just kind of grab them with your tongs and then use your knife to kind of split down in between the bones and they'll come apart really, really easily. Perfect. And then just chuck them into our pot here. Are nice and moist on the inside. Tons of juice. Really perfect right there. Not a huge smoke ring because obviously they only spent about 45 minutes on the grill, but that additional sort of piece of wood at the very beginning makes an enormous difference to the overall flavor of this. And I just want to coat them really nice and evenly in this melted butter. Not a ton of sauce by any stretch of the imagination on this. Just a nice even coating. With some nice coarsely chopped cilantro. So guys, that is it. Very, very simple dish. Really speaks to just the core ingredients here. The flavor of the pork, the seasoning, and obviously the importance of the really beautiful pecan wood smoke on this as well. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video, check out our others. And as always, cooking over wood makes a huge difference.